Hey folks, this is Kalani. Season 1 of The War Within is finally here, bringing us so much more content for us to dive into, with new gearing opportunities and much higher item level rewards. We have more options for every kind of player in this expansion, so whether you want to jump into the hardest group content or just chill with some solo content, you can get some amazing gear upgrades to really power up your character. But with so many options, it can be hard to keep everything straight, so we're going to break down every gearing option you have, how far you can go with each, and which sources of gear are the easiest to chase after. So here's our War Within Season 1 Ultimate Gearing Guide and how you can get to item level 635 and beyond. Now before we jump in be sure to hit up that like button and subscribe so you never miss another video. We can't really talk about gearing up without first going over the gear upgrade system because pretty much no matter where you're getting your gear from, you're going to be able to upgrade it. There are three major parts to the upgrade system, the gear itself, the Valor Stones currency, and then the various crests we need to collect. Every piece of gear that drops at endgame is going to have a special tag and an upgrade level. So we can see this piece of gear is item level 603, it's a piece of champion gear and it's currently 3 of 8 on its upgrade track. That means we can upgrade this item 5 times for a max upgrade level of 8 of 8. Each upgrade will increase its item level and make the piece of gear more powerful. The system is set up so that the different stages or upgrade brackets actually overlap. I'll pop a chart up on screen to better illustrate this. We have Explorer, Adventurer, Veteran, Champion, Hero and Myth Gear tracks. Explorer ranges from 558 to 580, but Adventurer starts halfway through that track at item level 571. The main reason for these overlaps is that so no matter what piece of gear you get or where you get it from, you will always be able to upgrade it immediately minimum of four times, so every piece of gear will always have some great upgrade potential. This also means you will never see an item drop at 5 of 8 on an upgrade track that will be 1 of 8 on the next track up. The two exceptions here are the hero track and the myth track which only have 6 upgrade stages each. This does mean that your gear will have a cap on how far it can be upgraded and to get higher item levels you'll need to source gear from those higher upgrade tracks instead. So that's how the gear works and how to read those upgrade names and numbers, but we're also going to need the Valor Stones currency to get any upgrading done. Valor Stones are rewarded from almost every type of content in the game, so you can get them from running dungeons, doing PvP, killing raid bosses, completing delves, daily quests, story quests, even digging in the dirt will net you some Valor Stones. As long as you're doing something at endgame, you'll be getting Valor Stones. We can only hold 2000 at a time, so if you're getting close to that 2000 limit, it may be time to start thinking about some gear upgrades. And then the last thing we need are crests. There are four types of crests, weathered crests, carved crests, rune crests, and gilded crests. Doing higher tiers of content will reward you with the better crests, and the higher the item level of the piece of gear you are trying to upgrade, the higher tier of crests you are going to need. All of the crests are tracked in your currency tab, so they're super easy to keep an eye on. You can get weathered crests from world quests, rares, heroic dungeons, and looking for raid boss kills. You can also get weathered crests from flying through these glowing orbs that you can find absolutely everywhere just floating up in the sky, so that's a very easy way to collect weathered crests specifically. Carved crests come from weekly activities, lower tier delves, mythic dungeons, mythic plus dungeons up to plus 3, and normal mode raid bosses. Ruined crests come from tier 8 bountiful delves, mythic plus keystone levels 4 to 8, and heroic raid boss kills. And then Gilded Crests come from Tier 8 Bountiful Treasure Troves by using Delve Maps, Mythic Plus Keystones, 9 or above, and Mythic Raid Bosses. You can also buy Carved Crests and Rune Crests from the Weekly Vault Vendor if you decide to take Tokens of Merit instead of the piece of gear for the week. Now you can only earn a certain amount of each crest per week. If you hover over the crest in your currency tab, it will tell you your current seasonal maximum. As the weeks go by, this increases by 90 per week, so we are limited on how many we can get and how quickly we can upgrade our gear. The good news is that if you cap on a higher tier of crest, for example runed crests, but continue to do content that would earn you rune crests, you will instead get carved crests. So it adjusts to the next crest down on the list and you'll keep getting 
adding rewards. The best way to see what kind of crest you need to upgrade your gear is to just take your gear to an upgrade vendor and plug it in. You'll be able to see how far you can upgrade that item, what item level it can go up to, how many Valor Stones it will cost, and what kinds of crests you will need. If you hover over the crests, the game even gives you examples of where each type comes from. The entire upgrade system also has catch-up mechanics baked into it. It will track your highest item level piece of gear for each slot, and if you are upgrading an item that is below that highest item level for a given slot, you will get a massive discount on your Valor Stone and Crest costs. So if you get an item with better stats or something like a really good trinket, you'll get a big discount if you've already upgraded a different item in that slot already. The Valor Stone discount even applies to your ults, which makes it even easier to play and maintain multiple characters. So now that we've got the upgrade system all squared away, let's talk about actual gear sources. We're going to start with the gearing options that are available to everyone. World quests can give you some quick and easy gear upgrades. World quest rewards are kind of random, but you can get up to item level 571 gear. So just take a look at what the world quests are offering each day and see if there's anything worth picking up. Rares can also drop some decent gear up to item level 574 in some cases, so it may be worth killing any rares you come across out in the world. There are also various weekly events and activities that you'll want to get done. There's one big weekly quest in Dornagal that rewards you with a pinnacle cash. You can complete the Theatre Troop event in Dornagal, the Awakening the Machine event in the Ringing Deeps, or the Spreading the Light event in Hallowfall to earn a cash for each. You can complete the Pact weekly quest in Ashkehet for another cash, and then there are also two special world quests every week called Special Assignments. Completing these will reward you with a cash each as well. The first two caches that you open in a week will reward you with item level 584 gear with some great upgrade potential, so you can get two easy pieces of gear every week by completing these weekly events. The first four caches that you open will also give you a restored coffer key, which you can use to increase your rewards from delves, we'll talk more about that in the delve section. Most of these activities will also contribute to your World Weekly Vault row, so you can even get weekly rewards on reset day by doing these weekly events. And then we also have all new world bosses to take down. You can find them by looking for the Skull Icon World Quest on your world map. Each world boss has a chance of dropping item level 603 gear, which can be upgraded all the way to item level 619, so you can get some huge upgrades. You can kill the world boss once per week per character. So that's pretty much everything for open world content, but another very powerful gearing option that everyone has access to is crafted gear. There are two tiers of crafted gear, the lower tier which caps out at item level 590, and the higher tier which can go all the way to 636. To craft the lower tier of gear, you'll need to get yourself an enchanted weathered harbinger crest. These are created by enchanters, so if you have enchanting you can make them yourself, otherwise you will need to place a crafting order for them. The main component is a nascent weathered crest, which costs 30 weathered crests and can be purchased from an enchanting supplies vendor. To use this enchanted crest to make some gear, you're going to want to find the blue recipes either in your professions or in the crafting order menu, then pop the enchanted crest into the optional reagent slot when you go to get it crafted. If you get these items crafted at rank 5, they will be item level 590, and they are one of the best ways to quickly gear up without spending too many crests or valor stones. This is how I personally filled in all of my lower item level gear slots going into season 1, but they are great for ults or for anyone who doesn't plan on doing much endgame. Game content. Now the higher tiers of crafted gear are a bit more complicated and a lot more time gated. We're going to need to get our hands on a spark of omens. There is only one way to get a spark of omens, you need to collect two fractured sparks of omens and combine them together. To get a fractured spark, you'll need to complete the important weekly quest in Dornagal. This seems to change every week, but you're looking for the big blue spiky quest that rewards you with a pinnacle cash. After completing this quest, you'll get one fractured spark. With us getting one half of a spark every week, it's going to take us two weeks to get a full spark that we can use for crafting. There is also a one-time quest right next to the catalyst that rewards you with an extra spark, so make sure you complete that as well. With your spark in hand, it's time to get some gear crafted. If you have your own professions leveled up, you just need to find the epic recipe you want to craft, collect all of the materials, plug in your spark, and craft away. 
If you don't have the professions, pop on by the crafting order clerks, find the piece of gear you want crafted, gather up all of the materials you see here, and when you're ready, pop in your spark and send the order out. If you use a public crafting order, you won't have any control over the resulting quality, so I would recommend finding a crafter in trade chat who can guarantee a rank 5 result. Any gear crafted with a spark can go up to item level 606 when crafted at rank 5, and with us getting a new spark every two weeks, that means we can all get a new piece of 606 gear every two weeks that go by, which is kinda crazy when you consider you don't really have to do much to get this gear made. But the true power and value of this gear comes into play when you add in the Enchanted Runed and Gilded Crests. Enchanted Rune Crests can take this gear up to item level 619, and Enchanted Gilded Crests go even further up to 636, the highest item level available for this crafted gear. You make these in the same way as the Enchanted Weather Crest, except you need to buy the Nascent Runed and Nascent Gilded Crests, so you'll need to be earning these crests to be able to unlock the true potential of crafted gear, but everyone can get the initial 606 gear crafted quite easily. You can also add embellishments to most crafted pieces of gear, giving them special or unique effects. You can only equip two items with embellishment effects, so you'll want to check your class guides on Wowhead to see what the best embellishments for you are, so you can craft the correct ones the first time. And don't forget that you can always choose the stats on your crafted gear by using a missive in the optional reagent slot as well. That means crafted gear always has your best stats on it, making it even better. Something else that everyone can jump into, with a group or all by yourself, is the new delve system. Delves are like mini dungeons or scenarios that you can play all by yourself. You can see delves on your world map, so they are very easy to locate. When you approach the entrance, you'll need to pick a tier or difficulty. As you go up in difficulty, obviously everything gets harder, but you can also get much better rewards. To unlock the higher tiers of delves, you need to complete your current tier and have revives remaining. The tier unlocks offer every delve and are also warbound, so you only have to unlock each difficulty once. Every delve you run will reward you with various currencies and experience for your delve companion. But we're here to talk about gear, and the big gear rewards only come from Bountiful Delves. Every day, four of your delves will be Bountiful. They have a different icon on the world map, so they're pretty easy to locate. These Bountiful Delves will have a special locked chest at the end of your run that can only be opened with a restored coffer key. These are the keys that come from the open world weekly caches. The first one you open will give you a key, so if you're interested in doing delves for gear, you'll want to get four caches per week from any of those weekly sources we already went over to get your four keys per week as well. Rewards for Delves cap out at Tier 8. Tiers 9, 10 and 11 are mainly for the challenge and seasonal rewards, so if you can get to Tier 8, you'll be getting item level 603 gear from those bountiful chests, which is pretty huge for content that you can complete all by yourself. You'll also be getting Ruined Harbinger Crests, which will unlock so many other upgrade paths for you. Delves will also contribute to your World Weekly Vault Row. The higher the tier you complete, the better the rewards will be, up to item level 616 when you you complete tier 8 delves, so delves give you some good gear progress to chase after, and this may be the highest item levels we've ever seen for solo player friendly content. While clearing your delves, you can also find these special maps. When you use this map, it will guarantee that your next high tier bountiful delve run will have an extra treasure trove waiting for you at the end, which contains 610 item level gear and some gilded crests, so there are even more chances to get some massive upgrades. Moving on, Season 1 also introduces the Nerobar Palace Raid, and as per usual, the raid can offer you some of the best gear available in the entire game. As you work through the raid, the rewards also get better, so the end bosses always drop better loot when compared to the first few bosses, which should help you move up into the next difficulty. For looking for raid, gear starts dropping at item level 584, with the end boss dropping item level 593 loot. On normal mode, we start out at item level 597, with the last boss dropping item level 606 gear. On heroic mode, the rewards start at item level 610, and scale all the way up to 619 from the last bosses. And then on mythic mode, we're getting item level 623 from the first bosses, working up to 632 from the last boss. There are also special items scattered throughout the raid, which have high higher item levels when compared to other loot, so those will be a huge power boost if you can get your hands on them. The raid is also the only place you can get tier set gear tokens reliably. These drop from specific bosses in the raid, so the raiders will usually have their full set before everyone else. 
The last boss also drops a webbed wrapped curio which can be handed in for any piece of tier set gear so you can use this to fill in your gaps quite nicely and get your full 4 set bonus in record time. Killing raid bosses on any difficulty will also be filling up your raid weekly vault row. You need 2 kills, 4 kills and 6 kills to unlock the first, second and third reward and the vault will give you a random piece of raid gear from the highest difficulty you've killed the bosses on. This includes both super rare items as well as tier set gear so an extra chance at those special items is going to be huge. Moving on to dungeons, the War Within changed things up quite a bit. You can run normal dungeons for item level 554 gear which can be used to give you a bit of an item level bump if you're a freshly dinged level 80. It's worth noting that you can do normal dungeons with other people by queuing as you usually would or you can complete them with NPC followers by queuing for a follower dungeon. This allows you to go at your own pace without having to worry about other players. You can also do random heroic dungeons which drop item level 580 gear. Another cool difference here is that the heroic dungeons will actually be the seasonal dungeons now so you're doing the same seasonal dungeons from heroic mode all the way up into mythic plus which means you can use heroic dungeon queues to learn the seasonal dungeons now so that's a nice change. Mythic dungeons will drop item level 593 gear, so a big jump up from the heroic rewards. You can only complete each dungeon on mythic difficulty once per day, so they have a daily lockout now. And then when the mythic plus keystone system opens up, that's where the big dungeon loot rewards are going to come in. Running a plus 2 key will reward you with item level 597 gear, and that's from the chest at the end of the run. The rewards scale all the way up to key level plus 9, which drops item level 613 gear, so as you climb through the keystone levels, you're going to see better and better rewards. Mythic Plus Dungeons are also one of the best repeatable sources of crests for upgrading your gear. The higher the key level you do, the higher the crests you're going to obtain, and you can farm Mythic Plus Dungeons pretty much endlessly so they can fulfill all of your upgrading needs. Completing any dungeon on heroic mode or above will also contribute to your dungeon weekly vault row. The higher the difficulty of dungeon you complete, the better the rewards you're going to get. These rewards cap out at item level 623 from running a keystone level 10 dungeon, so there's some huge upgrade potential in the weekly vault as well. It's also worth mentioning that you don't need to get a good piece of gear in the weekly vault for you to get some good rewards. At the bottom of your vault screen you will have an option to take a currency instead, the Algari Tokens of Merit. You'll get 2 tokens per reward slot you have unlocked up to a max of 6 tokens. So you can get 6 tokens per week and take them to the vendor right next to the vault to trade them in for gold, valor stones, carved crests, rune crests or an item that adds sockets to your seasonal gear. So even if you don't get good gear rewards in the vault, you can upgrade more gear in a variety of ways. As for PvP, gear is going to work a little differently because it has a PvE item level and a PvP item level. This ensures that your PvP gear is always much better in actual PvP situations. You can get item level 558 gear from the Honor vendor which has a PvP item level of 626. Honor can be earned by taking part in unrated PvP activities like random battlegrounds and brawls. The Conquest gear starts at item level 597 with a PvP PvP item level of 639. Conquest can be earned by taking part in rated PvP content or from various first wins of unrated PvP. And then there's a war mode vendor as well who sells item level 593 gear which has a PvP item level of 636 and to purchase this gear you'll need to obtain bloody tokens which can be obtained from special war mode only world quests or by killing players out in the world. Another very important system you want to learn about is the Catalyst. This time you can find the Catalyst plonked down right in the middle of Dornagal, so it's super easy to find. The Catalyst allows you to turn a piece of seasonal gear into tier set gear, giving you access to your 2 set and 4 set bonuses that can massively increase the power of your character. To use the Catalyst you'll need two things, a piece of seasonal gear and a Catalyst charge. The piece of gear can come from any end game seasonal activity so any gear you get from doing weekly activities, from the new world bosses, from delves, dungeons or the raid, or anything from your weekly vault should all work in the catalyst. The charges are super easy. We start with one charge and we get one charge every two weeks. So every two weeks that goes by we can turn another piece of gear into tier set gear. 
Now, if you're planning on doing some endgame content in Season 1 of The War Within, you'll want to know about the Spelunka Supreme Achievement. This will reward you with a token that you can trade in for a piece of heroic item level tier set gear, so it's basically just a free piece of tier gear of your choice at a really high item level, so this achievement is very lucrative. To earn this achievement and the gear token, you'll need to get to 1600 rating in rated PvP content, 2000 Mythic Plus score in the Mythic Plus keystone system or clear the raid on heroic mode or higher. But that should cover everything you could ever want to know about how to get gear in Season 1 of The War Within, so that's it for our Season 1 Ultimate Gear Guide. How are you going to be gearing up this time around? Pushing Mythic Plus keys as high as you can, clearing the raid every week, or trying out the new solo content in Delves? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and to all of our members here on YouTube. You can see the name floating by on screen. If you're interested in supporting the channel you can find the links in the description or click the join button just below the video. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful in any way make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you're always kept up to date. Thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun and as always I will see you next time.